So it's been brought to my attention that it's 25 years since the release of Blur's Park Life, which is quite an amazing thought. And by way of marking the anniversary of this great record, I thought I would take a look at the title track. So this album was quite an important one for me when I was younger, and it had quite a big impact. And I think from a guitar perspective, it kind of showed me the way forward and it showed me the kind of player that I wanted to be. I think Graham Coxon's kind of inventive stroppy art school approach to the instrument really connected with me in some way and from that point onwards I was less interested in trying to be some kind of widdly woo virtuoso on the guitar and more interested in good songs and inventive and creative playing. Now Park Life is one of those songs that I kind of knew how to play already but during the course of this week I've done quite a bit of careful listening and I've watched a load of old blur videos and I think I've corrected a couple of things that I wasn't quite getting right so this is my attempt at the definitive Park Life lesson. I've got my Coxon-esque Telecaster at the ready though funnily enough I've had this Telecaster for years since before I was into Graham Coxon so I think it's just coincidental that we both have a similar kind of guitar here. Um, anyway shall we get to the the lesson stuff? Let's kick off with the opening riff then. <laughs> One of those riffs that's quite easy when you know how, but it takes a little bit of deciphering exactly what's going on. So what we need to do is we're going to take an E chord, just your normal open position E, and we're going to move those three fingers up an octave, and you end up with this chord. And what we've got, we're letting the open strings ring. So we've got an open low E, then 14 on the A and the D, 13 on the G, and then open top two strings. So it's a really nice E major voicing. And we're gonna strum it like this. And we've got a down, up, down, up, down kind of a rhythm. This whole song has got a little bit of a swing to it. So it's that kind of bounce you, you, you're after here. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And the important thing here is to use a bit of muting in between some of these hits. So after that first downstroke on this chord, you want to mute all of the strings and you can just use the, the side or the, the, the back of your, your picking hand to do this. So we, we strum the chord and then we stop all the strings with the side of our hand. Then we go up, down and we mute again, up, down, and we mute. This is really important for the, the sound of this riff to get that muting correct. So, mute, up, down, mute, up, down, mute. Then we have this. So, what you need to do is just move your second and third fingers over to the G and the B strings. And we have this kind of a sound. So we, we've got the 14th fret on the G and the B. And we're allowing the open top string to ring, the open D, maybe a bit of the open A's is ringing out there as well. And we're going up, down on that little chord shape. Then we're moving these two fingers over to the D and the G string. So I'm now fretting 14th fret on the D, 14 on the G. Again, letting the open strings ring. So I'm, I'm, I'm letting the open B and the open top string ring here. And just playing a downstroke on, on that. So I think the, the best way to think of this is it's just an E chord and then you're just moving these two fingers over to the, the other pairs of strings during the riff. So all together slowly. Move those fingers over. Is uh, our opening riff, and it's, it's really the main riff for the song. Most of the, the the Phil Daniels talky stuff is done over that riff. Moving on to the chorus, then. <laughs> And 
we're coming down to the the open position for this. We're starting off with this kind of, I suppose it's a E minor pentatonic kind of a phrase. I think it's this. So we've got the open low E string, then we've got a slide into the third fret on the low E string. So I'm sliding from the second to the third frets here, I suppose. Then the second fret on the A, second fret on the D, and then open D string. And I'm, I'm hammering on from the open D to the second fret, and then picking the open D again. Um, at first I thought it was this, kind of sliding up to the fourth fret on the low E, but on, on, on closer inspection I can't hear that G sharp at all. I think it's just the, the G natural there. Uh, then we're into a series of bar chords. And this is all based around a fifth string root A shape bar chord. So we're starting off with first fret on the A string and then third fret on the D, G and B strings. That's a B flat. And then we're taking that one fret higher to a B. And then we're playing those two chords again. So. Then we play this single note riff again, and the second time we, we go up to a C bar chord. It's the same shape, but we've now got the root at the third fret. Then we're moving down one fret to the B, and then there's a little a little slide from the B flat to the B. That's the basic idea of, of the chorus part. If I just play all of that slowly, two, three, four. And really just kind of keep, keep your hand bouncing, keep feeling that swung with them. You can throw in a few extra little strums here and there, maybe some extra little, little slides if you want to, but that's that's the, uh, the the basis of the of the, the chorus riff, I think. And I think if you listen closely, there's just a little um, just a little passing B flat note, perhaps. And then we're into this really nice series of descending chords. Um, The guitar at this point in the song is actually mixed quite low. It's mainly vocals that you can hear, but this is uh, w what I think is going on in, in terms of the guitar part. We've got a G playing that twice. Then I, th I think we've got this kind of a sound. It's, it's a D but with an F sharp in the bass. So you can just use your thumb to come over the top of the neck and, and play that bass note. Uh, you could just just drop the the bass by one fret and still hold down the G chord if you wanted to, but I think to me it sounds slightly better doing the G to the D over F sharp. Then we've got an E minor, and then a D, and then C, and then we're just dropping the, the bass note by one fret on that C chord. So. So here I'm just playing the, the second fret on the A string, open D, G, and I'm keeping the first fret held down on the B string. Then we're arriving at this A sus4. So I've got an open A string, I'm barring the second fret on the D and the G with my first finger. I've got that fourth there, the third fret on the B string and then dropping down to the second fret on the B string. So it's A sus4 to A major. And then we're, 
we're moving higher up the neck. We've got B flat to B, but rather than playing it, playing it here, I think Coxon is going higher up the neck to these kind of E form bar chords. So this is at the sixth fret root, the B flat, up one fret to a B. Then we have this great so, um, kind of seventh arpeggio. Really nice sound this. So we, we've got um, seventh fret on the low E, six on the A, seven on the D, and then we're playing eight on the B, eight on the G, and I think you can just about hear seventh fret on the D again. So. What we've got here, I think, is it's a B7 with a sharp 5. It's kind of a jazz chord sound. It's a really nice tense, tense chord, which then takes you back to E for the for the main riff. So you've got the option of trying to hold down all, all of these notes at once. So a little bit awkward because you need to uh, do a, a bar across two strings with your, your little finger. You could, I suppose, put your thumb over the top and do this. But uh, what I think Coxon seems to do is he plays the, the bass note, then releases it, and just holds down the, the top part of that chord. So it's a bit easier under the fingers. Um, then, then we're back into the main riff. So. Why don't I just play the, the entire chorus through for you in time and, and slowly. So we've got one, two, three, four. back into the main riff and there's just a kind of linking section which goes like this just before the the second verse so it's the main riff played through once and then we have so I'm just playing that E chord and then I'm just moving the second and third fingers over by one string to the D and the G and then straight back to the E. Then whole song goes round again, we got the second verse, another chorus, and the one other bit that I think is worth talking about, there's just a little guitar overdub that comes in towards the end of the song and for the final verse of the song, and that sounds like this. We've got two, three, four. <laughs> This is uh, again up in the, the 12th position we've got open low E string then we're playing a little A major triad that's the 14th fret on the D G and B and then we're going to our E chord shape the same as we used in the main riff this time I can't hear any open strings so we're just playing the triad so. playing the 14th fret on the A string once, and then this. So this is the 12th fret on the D and G, playing that twice, and then hammering down at the 13th fret on the G. So that whole riff. So is anyone interested in the gear I'm using to make this video? Of course you are, it's YouTube. We love gear on YouTube. So let me tell you, the guitar I'm using is my Fender Telecaster. It's a 52 reissue. I actually made a video on this guitar, which you can find elsewhere on this channel if you're interested in knowing the details about this guitar. 
Pedal wise, I am using my Maxon Tube Screamer, which is a, a great pedal. I've not used it for ages, but it still sounds really good. I think it works particularly well for this song. And then amp wise, I'm going into my Vox AC30. I think Coxon tended to use Marshalls when he played live, and I assume he used Marshalls on the recording as well. But since I don't have a Marshall at the moment, I'd love to have a Marshall, but I don't have one at the moment. I'm using my Vox AC30, which I think sounds sounds pretty good. I'm just running that completely clean and using the Tube Screamer to get the overdrive sound. So that's how you play Park Life, or how I think you play Park Life. I'm going to post the music and tab up on my Patreon page if you want to check that out. Uh, incidentally, thank you to all my patrons for your support. And it, it was in fact one of my marvellous patrons who came up with the idea for this lesson and requested that I look at this song. So thanks for that as well. Thank you all for watching. I shall see you next week. Bye bye.